Take a look at this collection of great starting pitchers. If you're familiar with baseball, you recognize most if not all of these names. From past and present, these guys have crushed it on the mound and have become integral parts of successful, sometimes championship winning teams. There's one thing they all have in common though, and that's the fact that they all started out as relief pitchers, some with more success than others. It's probably a tough pill to swallow training your way through the minor leagues only to arrive at the show with no available spot in the starting rotation. But players know that helping their team in any way possible is priority number one, so for many young pitchers, egos must be set aside. The bullpen to starting pitcher pipeline has been alive and well for decades now. A team I like to highlight in this regard is the Milwaukee Brewers, who have made it a staple of their pitching development process, with the aforementioned names of Brandon Woodruff and Corbin Burns, as well as Adrian Hauser and Freddie Peralta spending sizable time as relievers before making the jump as full-time starters. It's worked well with all of these guys, and top prospect Aaron Ashby is likely the next guinea pig in line with a mix of relief and starter innings last season. He should be due for a rotation spot soon. One guy that won't have to worry about this is Alec Manoa of the Toronto Blue Jays. The 2019 first rounder spent time as a reliever in college, but after just nine career minor league starts, he was thrust into the Jays' rotation out of necessity. In a perfect world, Toronto might have wanted to have him develop more, but things worked out well, as Manoa pitched to a 3.22 ERA in 20 games started, finishing eighth in American. American League Rookie of the Year voting. The Blue Jays were a tough luck fourth place team, finishing with 91 wins. Their offense was second best in MLB, basically finishing a smidge behind the Astros in every conceivable category. But a huge part of their success down the stretch was the solidification of their starting rotation. Hey, that rhymed. That was a pretty good one. Robbie Ray blossomed into the American League's best starter in 2021, and the Jays acted quickly to replace him for 2022 by signing Kevin Gossman. Steven Matz bounced back in a really nice way last season and was able to anchor the rotation although he'll pitch for the Cardinals next season. However, there are plenty of arms hanging around for next season in addition to the newly signed Kevin Gosman. We mentioned breakout star Alec Manoa, but you can also add in Hyunjin Ryu to the mix, finally healthy again and under contract until 2024. But biggest of all is Jose Barrios, who Toronto acquired from the Twins via trade and inked to a seven-year team-friendly extension this offseason. I originally hated this trade, actually. You gotta be paping me! What in the hell are you doing? And I now love it because of what the Blue Jays did after the fact. Don't be afraid to change your opinion when presented with new information, folks. All right, that's your life lesson for today. Back to the rotation. This is a solid one through four, one of the best in all of baseball in my opinion. Anchoring the end of it will be Ross Stripling, who's had his ups and downs, but looks to be a reliable innings eater for Toronto next season. The only problem on Toronto's hands is a good problem to have, and that's a surplus of guys for this last spot. The most notable being their top prospect and subject of this video, Nate Pearson. It's been a tumultuous beginning to Nate Pearson's career, to say the least. For the past couple years, it seemed as though Pearson would be the X-factor to Toronto's success, yet every season, something seems to get in the way of that coming to fruition. Nate Pearson was mainly a reliever in college with mixed results, but after being taken 28th overall in 2017, the Jays began work on a project to make Pearson a dominant ace. Actually, let's take a quick detour here for some transaction history, because when the path is interesting, it's one of my favorite things in baseball. Let's go back to 2005, where the Blue Jays traded with Arizona for Troy Glaus, then flipped him a couple seasons later for should-be Hall of Famer Scott Rowland. If he's not on your ballot, I don't want to see it. They swung a deal for three players after a year and a half of Rowland, and one of the returning package players happened to be breakout slugger Edwin Encarnacion. After seven great years in Toronto, Edwin left in free agency and signed with the Cleveland Indians, now known as the Guardians, despite having a qualifying offer attached to him. That qualifying offer turned into the 28th overall pick in 2017, which then turned into Nate Pearson. Fun, right? Okay, sidebar over. Let's get back into it. His first year in the minors, Pearson dominated to a 0.90 ERA in 20 innings with 26 strikeouts and a 0.60 whip, tearing his way through rookie and single A ball, and landing at A-plus ball for the 2018 season. This is where we begin to see the hitches in the fast track for Nate Pearson. First, it was an oblique injury that delayed the start of his 2018 season. Then, in his first start of the minors that year, a freak line drive hit and broke the ulna in his right arm, which would end his season. He returned in 2019 and dominated to a 2.0 0 ERA and 25 starts between AA and 
AAA, and many expected him to make his MLB debut in 2020 to help the Blue Jays take the leap back into contention. He did, but as all of you know, he did so under the constraints of the pandemic season, and had pretty poor results all things considered. So then, the focus turned to the 2021 season, and Pearson arrived ready to go for spring training camp. Then, a sports hernia, which would delay his start of the season and eventually lead to two separate groin injuries, which would end his season before it really ever got started. Pearson pitched just 15 innings total in what was supposed to be his breakout season. Suddenly, the 19-year-old freshman the Jays drafted will turn 26 next summer, and over the five years he's developed, he has just 185 professional innings to show for himself. All the while, Alec Manoa, drafted later than him and ranked lower than him, took over the spot that was presumably carved out for Nate Pearson. So I feel for Big Nate. Nagging injuries, the pandemic season, and other extraneous factors have derailed the start of his once promising career, and now the Jays, who are ready to compete now, can't wait any longer for him to fill out their rotation. But I want to make a case for Nate Pearson here, and it goes back to what I mentioned at the very beginning of this video. Sometimes great starters have to be great relievers first, and I believe this could be Pearson's new path to success. Let's look at the data here. Pearson made just one start in 2021 against the Houston Astros, who had arguably the best offense in MLB. He understandably got roughed up, but if we exclude that outing, Pearson pitched to a 2.84 ERA in 11 relief outings, all in the month of September. In just 12 and two-thirds innings pitched in that span, Pearson struck out 20 batters. It's a small sample size, sure, but this is extremely encouraging. Let's go even smaller with our sample size then. In his final eight appearances, he allowed just five hits and one run while striking out 15 batters in nine and two-thirds innings for a 0.93 ERA. He pared down his pitch arsenal to fastballs and sliders in these last nine outings, watching his whiff rate rise in the process, an 8.2% jump from 2020. Even after a slew of injuries, Pearson is throwing harder than he ever has before, and anyone familiar with the Blue Jays' top prospect knows that his arm is a live firecracker. With an average speed of 97.8 miles per hour on his four-seam fastball, Pearson places in the 98th percentile of fastball speed in all of baseball. Of pitchers who threw at least 100 four-seamers in 2021, Pearson ranks 19th in average velocity, a smidge behind Sandy Alcantara, who just got a nice extension. His 186 expected batting average against on his four-seamer ranks in the top 40 for pitchers with at least 40 plate appearances against. So, this pitch is pretty tough to catch up with. It's not as though his velocity decreases as his workload increases either, amazingly enough. In his debut against the Nationals in 2020, he topped out at 96.8 miles per hour in the first inning, but the big right-hander came back and started pumping 98 plus in the second inning, which the Nationals lineup couldn't catch up with at all. With this, the Jays can preserve his electric arm and make him something of a two-inning monster reliever, much like the Brewers have done with their aces in the past. Not to mention, Pearson also has a wipeout secondary pitch like any great reliever should. It's his slider, thrown with an average velocity of 87 miles per hour, with a run and drop total several inches above league average. Though he struck out more batters with his fastball, Pearson got 13% more whiffs when throwing his slider last season. The slider acts as a setup pitch for his flaming hot fastball. The hot zone on Pearson's slider is fascinating to look at as well. Pearson's slider only gets hit hard when it's in the direct heart of the zone, and anywhere else, hitters struggle to make contact, let alone barrel the ball. The problem in 2021 was that Pearson had great command of his fastball and not so much control of his slider, a problem similar to one that Robbie Ray had faced before 2021. Ray was known for his high walk totals, but he was able to iron this issue out with pitching coach Pete Walker, one of Nate Pearson's most adamant defenders and supporters. One last important thing to note is that it doesn't seem like Pearson has full trust in his changeup and curveball pitches, throwing them just 2.7% of the time in 2021. These pitches have great potential, especially with the near 15 mile per hour difference in speed between Pearson's changeup and electric fastball. But with just two pitches that he can reliably throw at the highest level, being in the bullpen may be quite helpful to Pearson's confidence. We mentioned Pete Walker before, and you want to know who else thrived under him with a fastball slider diet? That would be Robbie Ray again, who threw those two pitches over 80% of the time combined. Speaking of Walker, the Jays coach, along with their analytics department, still very much view Pearson as a starter pitcher in the long term, and this leads to a point I want to make. I very much do not think that Nate Pearson will remain a reliever even as far as 2023. Many of the guys I mentioned at the beginning of the video only pitched out of the bullpen for a season or two seasons, but that season or two was essential to their developmental process, and I believe the same can be said for Nate Pearson. Pearson has one of the most electric fastballs in baseball already, coupled with a nasty slider that can buckle hitters easily. His workloads have been small, and his injuries have been a plenty. but I think if the Blue Jays can weaponize him as 
as a multi-inning threat ahead of the likes of Julian Merriweather and Jordan Romano, they can shore up one of their only weaknesses as a team, their bullpen. This is not to say that their bullpen is weak, but rather it's to say that they are young and unproven, but plenty talented. Steamer projections aren't the gospel that some people treat them to be, but they can often be a reliable prediction for a player's upcoming season. For Nate Pearson, he's projected to pitch in 33 games with 15 starts, totaling 99 innings. Regardless of results, if he can go somewhere close to the 100 inning benchmark, that should be considered a developmental success, as it would be more than half of all of his professional innings combined to this point. Steamer also predicts a 4.33 ERA, 9.56 K per 9, and a 1.0 Fangraphs war for next season. I think Nate Pearson will fit into this bullpen mold perfectly. He's hungry for an opportunity, and it must be a whirlwind for him. Once being treated like royalty and expecting to inherit a spot preserved for him, to now having to fight tooth and nail for any innings that he can get. The Jays rotation is solid, but any crack in it might leave a window open for Pearson. I have faith in Nate Pearson, and I think you should too. Fastballs like his don't come around very often, so I'd look for him to lock down some saves for Toronto next season. But that'll do it for this video. I'm the Jolly Olive, and I'll see you guys next time.